We picked up the attacker, I believe it was in Brandon. I'm not sure exactly where we, we picked him up, but uh, he got on the bus. He sat in the front very calmly, somewhere in the front, put his stuff away, didn't say a word to anybody. Uh, the bus continued on for, I'd say, another half an hour, and we stopped for a cigarette break. He got out, smoked a cigarette casually. I think he talked a little bit with another girl that was there. And when he got on the bus this time, he, he came right back to the back and sat next to the victim who was right behind me and put his things above in the, the overhead there and sat down. Um, he didn't say anything to the victim. The victim was just uh, sleeping with his headphones on. He was leaning against the window, sleeping, you know, doing his own little thing. He wasn't bothering the guy. I didn't hear any words at all exchanged between the two. Uh, I didn't see the guy, the attacker, talk to anybody else but, but the one girl there. Um, so started reading my book again. Uh, probably 20 minutes later, all of a sudden, we all heard this scream, a blood-curdling scream, like uh, just hair raising. We turned around and looked, and uh, I thought it was a fist fight at first. The one guy was standing up, and, you know, there was arms were flailing and stuff like that. And uh, But then I saw the guy had a big freaking Rambo knife, a uh, hunting knife, and it was covered in blood, and he was... He just kept going at the guy. It was like it was a robot, though. He, the guy had, you know, he wasn't screaming at the guy or he wasn't in a rage. It was just very calmly killing the guy. Um, the other guy was screaming bloody murder. Uh, when I knew what was going on, I, I ran up as close as I could to the front of the bus and screamed at the driver, stop the bus. Okay, there's somebody getting stabbed. Everybody get off the bus now, now. Uh, a lot of people didn't, you know, understand the urgency of what was going on. A lot of people were still sleeping and stuff like that. So it was a big crowd at the door trying to get out while everyone's staring at this guy getting getting stabbed to death. Uh, we eventually all got out, uh, moved to the back of the bus. Me and uh, the Greyhound driver and uh, a trucker that had stopped, see seeing people running out of the bus, figured there was trouble. He stopped and he came out with a pry bar and some other weapons, I guess, and. Uh, the three of us entered the bus to, to see if, if the victim was still alive or if there was something that we could do, what was going on in there. And uh, we saw the guy was over top of him and he was clearly cutting the guy's head off and then and, and gutting him uh, like an animal. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so he turned around at that point and saw us looking at him. Uh, he started moving toward us. We all jumped off the bus. The three of us jumped off the bus and the, the bus driver tried to shut the door but the guy was already at the door before that, and he was slashing at us. He had his hands out the door. He was trying to pry the door open. And uh, I was sitting there holding the door shut while this, you know, he's slashing at us, and the, the driver's trying to push the the button closed. Uh, yeah, the attacker ended up getting a good push in there and pushed back, and his arm came out too far. The, the Both of us ran around the bus and uh, came back around again. We didn't want to lose sight of him, so uh, looked under the bus to see if his feet were there. And um, he wasn't there, so he was still on the bus. So we ran up, pushed the, 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 the closed door. He was stuck on the bus. Uh, the three of us sat there against the door, you know, waiting for him to come out. He kept coming to the front and trying to push the buttons to, to get out. He, he went into the, the driver's seat, and it looked like he was starting the bus. We yelled at the bus driver, you know, he's going he's gonna to take off on the bus. So the, the bus driver disabled it somehow. I'm not sure how he did it, but uh, he came back and said, yeah, he's not going anywhere. Uh, at that point, we were still all guarding the door, and we watched him go back, return back to the victim. Uh, we went around to the front of the bus to see what was going on, and uh, he, that's when he, he brought the head up, and, and he came right calmly right towards us with the knife in one hand and the head in the other. And the three of us were just standing there in shock, like, and he just calmly looked at us with sunglasses on, dropped the head in front of us like it was no big deal.